Happy New Year! Oh, doesn't. <laughs> Say Happy New Year again. Happy New Year! No. <laughs> it doesn't work! <laughs> Wait, let's do. Uh, oh, it's already fired, that's why. Oh, is it? Don't worry about it. This week's video, we're talking about the F word. You guessed it, finances. So in case you missed it, we just finished our trip down the Oregon coast. And if you wanna go check it out, there'll be a link in the description down below. In this video, we're gonna talk about where we stayed, what we ate, and what we did to keep this trip as cheap as possible. So first things first, I have a little bit of a notepad here so I don't forget anything, but the first thing we did is made sure we stayed in as cheap of hotels as possible, and that would be Motel 6. It was like 70 bucks a night. It was also nice because you can stay there when you're 18. The thing about Motel 6 is some of the rooms can be a serious hit or miss. So the one we stayed at in Seattle was a smoking room, so it smelled horrible, and there was also some pretty like sketchy behavior happening outside. Probably watched a few drug deals. Ooh. Ooh. Rick. I think this is a smoking room. The ones that we stayed at for multiple nights, which would be Seaside, Oregon, and Portland, those were actually really nice. One of them was actually a hotel style, so there was actually hallways that you could walk down which we were not expecting at all. And they also had microwaves and fridges so you could keep like stuff like milk and juice. And I think we had eggs uh, just for your breakfasts and whatever. So the next point would be what we ate for this entire week that we were out. And so we brought and bought as much bulk food as we possibly could. What the uh, hell? Are you serious? <laughs> what is that? Oh, is something melting? So we, so we brought and bought as much bulk food as we possibly could. So as soon as we got there, we went out and bought all the perishable stuff that we needed, like eggs, milk, juice, and stuff like that. Stuff we had to keep cold. And then we also brought a cooler, so we made sure to keep everything cold. We also brought a camp stove so we could cook all the meals that we made so we didn't have to eat out all the time. That was a big thing, which was trying to eat in or make your meal as many times as you possibly could. So it was kind of funny. In our hotel room, we were making eggs and bacon. It smelled pretty good, but then hotel room service went in right after us and we kind of felt bad. Uh, we tried to air out the place by opening the window. I don't know how well that worked. So instead of going out to buy food, we bought groceries from Target, but we didn't really have a good way to cook them, so we brought a camping stove in the hotel room. Sorry, Motel 6. <laughs> I'm just cooking up a feast here. For another day for lunch, we also made sandwiches in Mitchell's car. So we brought a cooler with all the condiments we needed, sandwich meat, and we kind of set up like the subway station in Mitchell's car and I was busy crafting all these sandwiches. So we uh, are planning to have some sandwiches because we brought things. It's just, we don't really have anywhere to do it and we don't want to leave the car and bring this with us. We don't want the luxury of spreading it out. <laughs> so you're gonna have to deal. So aside from doing sandwiches in Mitchell's car, we also made hot dogs on the beach one day. So we brought the camp stove, hot dogs, buns, and everything we needed, and we just grilled up on the beach. I honestly think it was way more enjoyable than eating at a restaurant because, I don't know, you're hanging out with your friends, we had a fire going, and it was just a lot of fun playing frisbee and all that. The two other guys are just down there. They're actually walking towards the blanket now. They've just been getting some B-roll and stuff, but I've been cooking up. So now we have some uh, hot dogs on the right, on the go. We got a nice view right down there. So it's a pretty good setup, I think. Um, we're just kind of hanging out, waiting for the sun to set and enjoying everything. So we didn't eat like we were camping the entire time. We did eat out twice. So we uh, went to Pizza Hut one day. It was a smoking deal. We got more than enough pizza for, I think it was two or three meals. And then we also went to Olive Garden. And if you don't know here in Canada, or where we live especially, there is no Olive Gardens whatsoever. So we made it kind of our mission to go out to one and we had more than enough pasta and food for multiple meals. Look at that. We, uh... So we just went to Olive Garden and then we got meals and then we kind of 
got like another no, meal. Well, we did. Because this is a budget trip, we bought the uh, bottomless uh, pasta bowls for $11 or whatever it was. So we bought bottomless pasta so we could eat as much as we could. And then what we did is we then- t well, We gorged ourselves. We gorged ourselves. We're all freaking like, we're so full. Like it's kind of ridiculous. Almost got sick. And then- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tommy had a good trip to the bathroom. Yo, it was like... <laughs> then we got a refill and then took that home. So now we have another meal for tomorrow. So although we did eat out twice on that trip, both places we picked were probably the best choices we could have made because we got two meals or more per place that we went to and it didn't actually end up costing all that much because there was so much food we could have eaten. So that poses the question of what we even did for the entire week that we were away and we made sure to do as many attractions as we possibly could that didn't cost us anything. Uh, so we saw various beaches and waterfalls. Uh, for example, Multnomah Falls was free the only issue is that it was really touristy. That, like, it wasn't terrible, but something like Abiqua Falls, which was much harder to get to, was way nicer, I thought, because uh, there was nobody there. We had the entire place to ourselves for like two hours, this huge waterfall, and I think, honestly, I thought it was way better than Multnomah. So not everything we did involved us doing hours of driving. So we made sure we brought a Frisbee and a skimboard for Cannon Beach, and one of the things I really wanted to do was fly a kite on Cannon Beach. Back in, uh... Back in 06, I was a serious kite flying champion. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I uh, won the uh, the Western Regional Kite Flying Championship <laughs> of the Pacific Northwest. It was an <laughs> honor, actually. It was an honor. It was a. Uh, it was it was dedication. Let's... I had to. I spent hours upon hours every day just, flying kites. Just training. We are watching a master at work. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You guys are, you guys are truly lucky to uh, <laughs> to be in my presence. Not not to put my own am, tires or anything. I am shaking. I don't know about you guys at home. I, I, I can't even tie this knot. I'm just too nervous <laughs> to be filmed. My art, my craft has never been recorded before. <laughs> this is the first. Why are you laughing? This is a story. Yeah, matter. no. Shh, quiet. Everything must be done with great haste, but silence. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. With this greatness here. Lift. Wow. Wow. That wasn't. Sorry, that's a warm up. <laughs> I always, always crash on the first attempt. <laughs> okay. It lets me uh, get a feel for the wind. Lift. And run. <laughs> and crash. That, that wasn't too good. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Do you want to explain it, what's it going must on? Be the wind. Oh, it's the wind? It's a little too thin down here. <laughs> I've never I'm, heard of someone say a thin wind before. No, it's uh, it's very thin here. <laughs> I'm used to the uh, the winds of Everest. They've really given me a lot of. Uh, Was that the world championships or at Everest? Yep, Everest, <laughs> highest average wind speed per year. It's serious over there. We got it. We're running. We're running. We're running. And we're turning. And we're good. We're in the air. It's oh. <laughs> I think he's given up. It looks like he's taking his kite for a walk. Poor guy. One last attempt though, this is the one. One more string out. No. That was a lot of fun. And then we ended off the night by having a fire and just enjoying the sunset. So one of the biggest expenses on a road trip is usually gas. So we made sure we picked as fuel efficient car as we could, which would be Mitchell's Volkswagen Golf. And then we filled up at as cheap of places as we could find. And we also found a few places that if you pay cash, it's a lot cheaper. So we did that as much as we could. Uh, we also made sure we planned out our attractions so they're as much in a circuit as possible. This means that we weren't driving from one place to another place and then back to where we just were. All these factors really helped in keeping the cost down and making sure that we didn't spend that much on gas. After it's all said and done, I'm going to do a bit of a cost breakdown to show you how much it costs for each item we spent money on. First things first would be hotels, which is about $450. This is for a week-long trip, six nights, so that was pretty cheap. The next thing would be gas, which is $250 for all the driving we did from Kelowna down to Oregon along the coast, and then to Portland and then back. The next thing would be food, which is about $350. Uh, that was for us to eat for the whole week. We also ate out, so I think that was also pretty cheap. And then the next thing would be friendship, which I have to say is totally priceless. I'm just kidding. This, uh, after you add that all up, I think it adds to about just over $1,000.
And the kicker is that was also for three people. So that works out to about $350 a person. And I think that was probably the best bang for buck experience we ever could have had. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Having my two best buds come with me on a road trip down the Oregon coast for a whole week. And we had unbelievable amounts of fun. Like we were, there was points when we were going to keel over dying with laughter just because it's just the people you bring and the experiences that you share with people that really make the experience. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video a lot. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make and I encourage you guys to go out and have a road trip with your friends, get them together, pile them in a car and see what you can find. You never know what might happen. And I guess we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>